There are a surprising amount of cursed Gmod TARDIS add-ons, whether it be intentionally bad, just so old it's kind of eerie, or even a really good and well-made TARDIS that just has a toilet version for some reason. And if I'm honest, they do kind of just get weirder and weirder by the end. Elifez words, these are all the most cursed TARDISes in Gary's mod, and I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, because a few of these are genuinely some of my favourites, especially the last one, but I'll get to that more later on. The first one here is called The Old Default, and shockingly, it's The Old Default back when the TARDIS rewrite first came out, and it's obviously aged terribly. The exterior here is the same as the more recent default which only changed in November last year. But anyway, the exterior isn't too bad. And I wouldn't say it's really cursed. It has lots of skins and even a body groups option. It's when I open the doors it becomes immediately obvious why it's in this video. It just looks like a texture and lighting glitch. It's very unsettling. The room is so unnecessarily large with the bottom of the barrel decorations to fill the place like chairs and buttons. And speaking of large, oh my god this rotor is extremely thick. I swear that's not normal. The proportions of that compared to the console and literally everything else is very strange and incredibly wrong to be looking at. Also as you know, the point of rails is to stop you from falling off. Well these ones have a new mission and actively let you fall off and die. Which is an interesting feature. Yep, that's definitely an intended feature. There's actually quite a lot of things in here which you can just walk straight through. Like this side panel. This door support beam thing this door frame and probably some more it wouldn't surprise me and yeah as much as this is terribly cursed it does hold a special place in my heart and possibly some of you watching thinking this as well because back in the day almost 10 years ago this video by ventura and terror released talking about this and i never watched them too much but i very vaguely remember watching it and that just brings back all the memories i'm just editing this and i'm trying to find the video where ventura and tail played with this exact version of the tardis but i can't for the life of me find it so please tell me in the comments below if you remember it or if i'm just going insane because i swear it was one of the most popular gmod tardis ones anyway enjoy the video but when you do get rid of the nostalgia factor this is just utterly terrible depending on which version you're using the only color you get is a lot of blue with a lot of shadows or a lot and i mean a lot of burning orange and then a lot of shadows obviously and then it doesn't matter which version you're using either one you get these two random orange dots on these two roundels and if you haven't realized already none of these controls actually work or have animations so the only way to pilot is to use alt e however both of these scanners actually have full functionality which makes this tardis actually usable and you may also be able to hear that the general tardis ambient hum is interrupted quite often with the classic sort of engine noises there you go. And that happens just way too often. It's really quite jarring. It's just so random and just not necessary. But I can't hate on it too much, because it's literally the first of its kind. This is basically a time capsule from right at the start of the TARDIS rewrite's existence. And I'm glad they've made it available, even if it is insanely strange when you look at it for more than a second, because it really demonstrates how well this add-on has evolved in nearly a whole decade. This next TARDIS is actually really well made, and it's very unique. And I guess it's also quite a niche reference to the show, so you may not know about this. And the TARDIS itself isn't really the cursed thing here. Yeah, the interior is like a weird white void. And the exterior is a really oversimplified version of like a Tom Baker TARDIS. But no, the reason this is in this video is because where it's from. If you don't know, there were these mini episode type things released in Australia in 1979. And it was a part of an ad campaign for Prime Computers. And oh my god, these have aged really badly. I mean, obviously a tech related advert from the late 70s is going to seem stupid from a 2024 perspective. But even disregarding that, the whole canonicity and contradictory to the show is obviously going to be flawed. And it's just a quick few ads for a computer anyways doesn't matter too much but the biggest thing here is the unnervingly weird underlying tone these ads have like just watch this where would the energy industry be without prime ask it how to handle a woman romana was you married? yes Oh, Prime. It just feels so off and so random. I get that these two did get married for a while in real life, and these were apparently written by Tom Baker himself, but it's just not really necessary. Like, just get on with saving the day by stepping into the 80s and using a Prime quote-unquote supercomputer already. I'm making it seem a bit worse than it actually is, because there are some honestly quite good and funny parts to these ads, but overall it is a bit too much in my opinion. Anyway, back to the TARDIS. The exterior is pretty basic, as I'd mentioned before. It's basically an oversimplified version of the fourth Doctor's TARDIS. And it does look really weird seeing cool 911 on a British police box or cool box 
I guess. The light on the box is also very strange. It's essentially a smaller version of the 1974 intro police boxes. And to be fair, it's not actually that bad, at least for the time. And to be honest, this interior is actually a really good replica of the one seen in the ads. And I'm not sure I really like it yet. I mean, it is very unique as it's in a sort of void-like area with just a bunch of prime computers in it, which to be fair does look quite good. However, in the ads there were a few more computers dotted around the place, which would help to make this central area feel a bit less empty. But to be fair, it is literally just in a white box, so it doesn't really matter too much. However, the white back of the doors I'm not actually a really big fan of, but as far as I can tell, the back of the doors weren't seen in the adverts, so I guess this is just something the Alan Credit put in here. And the ambient noise is just a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of computers whirring. Which is a really nice touch, to be fair. And it's actually similar to the Peter Cushing TARDIS in here, where it's just a bunch of technology in a solid coloured room. Except here, there's just a few computers, a chair, and a coat hanger. Although I do actually really like the control system. It works in a very similar way to the Kleiner's lab TARDIS, and it attaches controls to various computers dotted around the place. Because of that, obviously, there's only going to be a few basic controls in here. But it does work really well for what it does. And if more computers were added, like I mentioned earlier, there would be some more opportunities for controls to be added. I like I love that the only animation that actually happens in here are these two tapes whirring, and that's when you're in flight or in the vortex. It keeps it very basic and continues that simplistic feel, although this monitor does also have an animation. It just continuously displays things it did in the ads, which is very strange out of context, but to be fair, not a lot better in context. And this TARDIS also has a chair, which is very rare for a TARDIS, especially during Classic Who to be fair. Also the dematerialization on this is really quick which I am seeing more and more often, however this one's really smooth with like, no real issues. Because some others do, I don't know why there isn't a vortex in there go. But yeah, it's a really smooth process. Some others like glitch and go invisible for a bit, but this one's actually really good. And yeah, the vortex is like this grey version of the fourth Doctor's vortex. And because the only source of light in here is, well, everything, when you get to low health, it becomes very bright red. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> then when you turn the power off, it becomes just dark enough, where it literally, well, it's dark, but also all the computers and things are just visible enough to look like really cinematic. I don't really know how to explain it. And then there's also another exterior option, which is just the same as the prime computer as seen in the interior. And while we're talking about the fourth Doctor's TARDISes, the next one I really want to quickly talk about is this one specific version of the Tom Baker secondary console room. As much as people for some reason love to hate the secondary control room, I actually really like it in the show. Yeah, it may not have a rotor and it's literally wood, but it's very aesthetic and a massive contrast for the rest of Classic Who interiors. But the reason I find this one cursed, and you'll probably agree with me here, it's just for one small reason. When you press the middle button on the bottom row on this one panel, this door will slide. And a really random picture reveals itself. And it's in like a little room. Now this could be considered cursed enough, but when you actually interact with this image, random music starts to play quite quietly at first, but then it suddenly will go to like a million decibels with incredible bass boosting. Just give it a second. There you go. Jesus Christ. I don't play too much of that in case it's copyrighted, but you get the point. An extremely random and unnecessary thing in the TARDIS that has no value to the general experience, and it's probably something that very few people even know about, but I guess that's Gmod for you. This next one's pretty interesting, because it's intentionally just terrible. There's not really any context I can give for this one. Straight off the bat, you can see the exterior is just a slightly stretched out Kablam box from Series 12, then it has some floating steps going up it. So far it's not too bad, but as soon as I open it I think you'll quickly see the problem. Yeah. So on top of this knowingly being, well, the worst TARDIS ever, it's also broken, which just adds to it to be fair. And in case you're wondering, I'll show you how to fix this bug after I've shown the interior. So as you can see, the interior is kind of like sideways. It's supposed to have a big mavity defying entrance, kind of like the Crash of the Byzantium in the Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone two-parter. What happens instead is that you go in it and you're just kind of here. So this is actually broken as well, which to be fair might be intentional, who knows. But either way, you have to use O and E to actually enter it. It's a great looking doorway. Just the look of the interior just screams well, A, cardboard, but mainly, it just does a really good job of reflecting its name. Having grass be the floor should be a crime within itself, but having it also have a metal noise is even worse. 
And this just kind of looks like a six year old had a bunch of random cardboard and wanted to make a TARDIS. So it drew some roundels and placed it in a somewhat circular shape and then used, I don't know, like jelly or something for the rotor. Also, the dozens of overlapping textures is really just the icing on the cake. Also, I've no idea what these three little bumps are. They look like soggy bits of cardboard thrown against the wall and it just dried there. And wait, oh my god. I've just realised the ceiling is the same texture as the walls, but there's thousands of them. Copied and pasted over and over and over. How did I not notice that before? But it doesn't stop here, because if I spawn a new one in, and then no clip into the interior, you can see a bunch of Kablam logos copied and pasted again. I don't even know why they would do this who looks in here apart from me i guess this is a living hell and while we're talking about the exterior i just want to mention that if you use the chameleon circuit then only the interior will become a really cursed mess although the view of the outside world from the inside is upside down and vice versa kind of looks worse actually also the visual glitch in the exterior still stays when you change it i mean this tyrus is really just testing the laws of mavity here oh and by the way to get rid of this glitch because it still stays when you get rid of the tardis you just have to spawn another tardis in and then open the doors that's it man i love this tardis and not only does the rotor look like it's jelly the animation is also very jelly like and for as bad as this tardis is the rotor animation is pretty cool to be fair and in case you were wondering it just has the default 2013 vortex but because of the exterior glitch, it just blends in and you can barely see it unless you have it right against its edge. And just quickly before I show you the elevator TARDIS and the Sentinel TARDIS, which is basically just a revamp of the old TARDIS, I just want to quickly mention that the new 2023 Plus TARDIS hasn't got an official release date, but by the looks of things, it's in the final stages of development. So make sure you subscribe so you can see me review it as soon as it comes out, which could literally be tomorrow for all we know. This next TARDIS is once again just knowingly bad, although this one is quite old from 2016, so it is genuinely just broken due to lack of updates as well as just being and i quote the most terrible tardis extension that exists but to be honest i don't think it's actually that bad yeah it's terribly cursed but it doesn't deserve all the hate the exterior is what you would expect it gets the job done even if it's just multiple gray rectangles smushed together then this back bit comes out a bit which is where the actual elevator would be but there's also some like circuitry imagery i guess that is i don't know why there need to be a circuit there it's an elevator not a computer but i don't know i'm not an engineer the only workings of an elevator I've seen is that one shot on Doctor Who that keeps coming up and much like the previous TARDIS it also has this weird glitch but you can also see that the interior is significantly big on the inside I think it's a bit unnecessary but at least it keeps in line with the whole TARDIS thing I guess the floor and ceiling are just really stretched out textures and the rest is pretty unremarkable and then there's this I guess console which is just a panel of buttons there's nine buttons but only five interactable ones however the last one's actually quite interesting and it's something I would love to see more of if I'm honest the first one's a flight toggle and if I just use Alt-E, you can see that... Oh yeah, I forgot it was glitched. But you can see that it works just like a normal TARDIS. And an elevator, I guess. Except it works with Bluetooth and is a wireless elevator. And it's even anti-mavity in all three directions. And speaking of mavity, the anti-mavs or the float control is in the middle of the console. The middle of the top row is the throttle. And just to the right of that is the lock. But the thing that I genuinely really love the concept of and would actually love to see in some other add-ons is this button here. And it's labelled as an emergency takeoff. And it's basically just a reverse of pulling the handbrake in the vortex. Except here, the amount of shaking is dulled up to 11. And the flight noise is just really very odd. It's quite hard to describe, but I'll give it a go. It's like if there was one of those kid toys. Actually, what are they called? Ew, why is it called a groan tube? So it's like if there was a groan tube, I can't say that. So it's like if there was a groan tube and a wind machine at the same time. And then someone recorded that with a really old Logitech webcam. I'd say that's a pretty accurate description to be fair. And also this vortex is just... Yeah, I think it's safe to assume this hasn't been updated in quite a while. And then because of this glitch, once again, the TARDIS is like invisible in 75% of the vortex. But with this being a pretty small add-on, there's not really anything else to mention. So I think it's time to talk about the Sentinel TARDIS, because I absolutely love it. You may remember the old TARDIS from quite a while ago, and you may also remember that it's completely broken now. I mean, straight away it's creating script errors and it's pink, and then the interior well it doesn't exist from what i can make out the initial goal for the sentinel tardis was to be a remake of the tardis with a brand new interior new textures new features basically just a whole new tardis but as time went on it became its own little thing which makes it incredibly cursed to see a really good and unique tardis add-on to have a seemingly unrelated alternate version 
be the TARDIS. But you can't complain, just look at it. But once you know that backstory, the default still has some elements of it in it, because it kind of looks like it's in a sewer, with all these pipes and the fans and things. And because these two have the same interior, I'll come back to the TARDIS later on, because it has its own custom sounds, obviously a custom exterior, and more. But I can't not talk about this default version. The exterior has a similar sort of shape to the Warriors TARDIS, but then it also has a similar colour and handles, as well as the Satan Abrams sign from the Toyota TARDIS. But it's also got its fair share of custom stuff, like the text point and random boldness, the window pattern, which actually changes on each side, kind of like the 8th Doctor's TARDIS, which there's another skin for by the way, but mainly just the texture itself, like it's really really good. It looks newly painted, but also damaged, clean, but very dirty, blue, and a lot more blue, basically just a really good exterior, and then the interior just continues this really well. It's very lively, in fact. It has multiple animations going on at once, like these fans, this monitor on the console, the rotor, and it isn't too much, it works really well. Also, all of these pipes flowing all around the place works so well. It's kind of like all the wires and other interiors, except it's pipes. But don't worry, wire lovers, there is wires up there, and a single wire coming out the back. There's also a corridor system, with three very very dark rooms then it meets around the other side in a kind of semicircle shape and i just love to see hallways and other rooms and tardises so although it's kind of pointless i can't say anything bad about it but the main thing here at least in my opinion is this console it's sort of a blend between the eighth doctor's console and the toyota consoles it's filled with typical things like the menu destination select but it's mainly just custom things like little switches massive levers smaller levers buttons dials like there's everything really it's also renamed quite a lot of things to be like less formal i guess like the redecoration switch is now changed desktop power switch is now the power dial as well as the door dial then there's exterior shields instead of just shields which actually makes more sense if i'm honest but i can't give it all praise because it's actually a spelling mistake where it says anti-gravs it's actually meant to be anti-mavs m-a-v-s so hopefully they fix that at some point but on a more serious note i'm not really sure how i feel about these coordinates and whatever this is on this little edge bit of the console i think it'd be better if they were either put on the main bit or some more controls were on this edge then this interior door is really random but it looks so good I don't think I've ever seen a door like this, but if that wasn't good enough, there's actually 11 different lighting options in here, not counting this glitch which changes it to blue if you stand far away enough. Don't know why that is. But you can get this in the settings, and if you go to lighter, you can see all these different versions. My personal favourite is the water, because I love the look of this like teal blue colour. I think it works really well with the rest of the interior. And then just from memory, I think it has the same dematerialisation sound as the 8th Doctor's TARDIS. So that with the windows on the console means it may have been a bigger inspiration than I thought. The Vortex skin here is actually the new Vortex from the last four episodes of Doctor Who, which is quite a nice touch. But let's cut the crap and take a crap in the TARDIS. I couldn't think of a better transition, I'm sorry. As you can see, this version has a porta body exterior. It's got a surprising amount of detail for literally being a toilet, and it's just very recognisable, which always determines to me personally whether it's good or not. Although I'm kind of scared to ask what all these marks are meant to be. However, there's one small thing that if it was added, would make this the best thing ever. But I'm not sure it's actually possible. I think it would be the biggest attention to detail and the best thing a stylist could do if when you locked it this green turned into red to signify it's occupied again it may not actually be possible but if it is then it would be a really good addition and the interior is basically the exact same except the double doors version as the back of the door here the biggest difference and the main reason i've put this tardis or, or tardis i should say in this video is because of the sound specifically the flight sound just listen to this real quick Now at first I thought it was someone using the toilet, but I thought that was really weird and a bit off. But since I've listened to it again, I've concluded that would be too weird, even for this TARDIS. And that it's actually a flushing noise. But let me know what you hear in the comment. I actually maybe don't do that. Let's quickly move on. And then the takeoff mixes in a bit more of the actual TARDIS noises with the flushing sound. More than the flight did at least. But don't worry, there's still plenty of toilet sounds going on. It's also very weird to see a floating toilet in the vortex. I'm just going to end it on that really weird note. So watch here to see me review the best Doctor Who map in Gmod, because it's actually really fun to play on and explore.